Pete Canavan. Our first guest is a martial arts master. You say we have three seconds to react to a violent attack. Do we know what to do? And obviously most people would say no. So let's get to the chase. What do we do? The biggest problem is that most people don't ask themselves the question of what should I do if I were to be attacked or if something were to you know, sort of erupt around me, and they don't ask themselves those tough questions ahead of time. And so if you ask yourself the tough questions before you need the answer, that obviously can cut down dramatically on, the, on your reaction time. So, for example, you know, I say basically have three seconds to react to an attack. Well, if you've already asked yourself in the past, for example, you know, well, what would happen if I were to come out of the supermarket and, you know, I'm putting groceries in my car and somebody comes up to me and, you know, and tries to take my vehicle or my purse or rob me or what should I do? Well, if you've never asked yourself that question, you won't have an answer. And so now you're trying to formulate an answer when the attack is actually occurring. And so that ends up being a, a lot of time that you waste. But if you know in the past, well, I know that if somebody you know, ever comes up to me, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, which may be I'm going to drop what I have, scream, uh, run around the car so that I put the car in between myself and the person trying to attack me. If you've asked yourself and come up with a, you know, an answer ahead of time, then you don't have to think about it. You can just react. And so that's sort of the whole gist of that, you know, you've only got three seconds to react, you know what to do. Oops. You talk about women's purses. You say that there are five things in every woman's purse that can ward off an attack. Now, I have my purse right here. <laughs> so let's see if I have these items. What are they? Okay, I'll give you, uh, you have hairspray? No. I live in California. What do I need hairspray? <laughs> <laughs> well, hairspray is an item that a lot of women do carry in their purse, and they never think that you know they could use that, for example, to spray that in an attacker's eyes. I mean... If you've ever gotten hairspray in your eyes, you know it burns like a son of a gun. Oh, okay. All right. That's interesting. Okay. All right. Hairspray. So, so that okay. Could be one. All right. Do you have a, a manicure kit or a nail file? or? I have a nail file. Okay. Well, a nail file is a sharp instrument. You could definitely use that to to stick somebody, to, to gouge somebody, or to you know put it against somebody's hand to get them to release a grip on you, for example, or, God forbid, stab them. Okay. Nail uh, file. Okay. You... Uh, the purse itself could be used as a, you know, to swing and to, to hit somebody with. Okay. Yeah, my purse is huge. If I swung this, <laughs> if I swung this, anybody, I think I could, it would knock them out. <laughs> what about a pen? Do you, do you carry a pen? Well, oh yeah, I have about purse. five of them. Yeah. Well, there you go. You put one in each hand. Oh. Okay. You're, you're, you're wielding two weapons. Ah, <laughs> uh, pen. Ah, oh, okay. I didn't think a pen as think of a pen as a weapon all right oh there are some very effective defensive pens i'm not talking some little cheap plastic pen you know i'm talking about you know you can just go to your local staples and buy a zebra makes a great line of stainless steel pens stainless and they're steel. cheap you know, four or five dollars a piece and you've effectively got a really strong pen that can be used to either as a leverage weapon or as either a, or a stabbing weapon how about a flashlight uh, I have one on my um, keychain. It's just a little tiny one, though. Okay. Well, speaking of keychain, obviously your keys can be used, but we don't want to get up close to somebody if we don't have to, which is why I'm mentioning some of these things that are more of a distance weapon. But a flashlight, a very good, strong flashlight, is an excellent distance weapon because if you flash it in an attacker's eyes, uh, and even some of these tactical, quote, tactical flashlights have a, a strobe feature, you flash that in an attacker's eyes, they can't see. Well, if they can't see you, they can't attack you. Okay. All right. Oh, that's good. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. I have a big purse, so I I can put all these things in there. <laughs> so. there you go. But what about? Do you recommend that women carry um, pepper spray or mace? Well, pepper spray and mace are definitely uh, pepper spray is is an excellent thing to carry. I make sure my wife has one in her purse and in her car all the time. Okay. Uh, because you know, there's a reason why law enforcement and corrections officers and Public safety professionals carry pepper spray because it's it's non-lethal, but it's an extremely effective deterrent because number one, it is again a distance weapon, so you don't have to be touching somebody to use it. You know, that a lot of times they squirt you know at least about a dozen feet or so, mm -hmm. and uh, you use it in a back and forth motion, right across the attacker's eyes. If somebody's wearing glasses, you aim for their forehead. That way, it drips into their eyes. Okay. And uh, it blinds them, and they can't see. And if they can't see again, they can't attack you. You know, we obviously have a scary situation with terrorists, and you know, supposedly they 
are all around us now. And, you know, I'm in California, so very familiar with the San Bernardino attacks and, of course, what happened in Orlando. How on earth can we prevent that if there's any way or stay safe during a crisis like that? The number one way that anyone can stay safe, no matter what, including terrorism, is to be what I like to call being armed with awareness. Okay. Awareness will keep you out of so many bad situations simply by noticing the people, the places, the objects around you. When you go into an unfamiliar area, make sure you know where the exit is and how to get out of there quickly if you need to be. If you know, if you're paying attention to your surroundings and, you know, some of the younger folks out there, as we're seeing in the news, are all playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> and they're not uh, paying attention because they're, you know, watching their phones, which, I mean, geez, even before that game, everybody was watching their phones. Mm-hmm. You know, texting. I mean, all you got to do is look on the street and, you know, half the people out there have their nose buried in their phone. Exactly. They're um, not, they're not very aware. not paying attention. <laughs> yeah. You're setting yourself up to somebody to be able to take advantage of you. You know, somebody across the street could be watching and saying, okay, there's somebody who looks vulnerable. They're not paying attention. They might be well-dressed. They're wearing jewelry. That might be a nice soft target for me. So they'll follow you. You're not paying attention, so you don't know you're being followed. Next thing you know, the opportunity presents itself, and now you're attacked. And yeah. if you had simply, you know, paid a little bit more attention to what's around you, that, you know, hey, that person's been nearby me for the last three blocks. Why? Go into a, a you know heavily populated area and wait, you know, and see what's going, and see what's up, you know. And, and it's not paranoia. It's not paranoia. You are simply looking after your own personal safety because nobody else is going to look out for you. By the time something happens and you know the police are called or 911 is called, there's going to be a delay. And that delay, like I said, you know, we talked about it initially, you got three seconds. The cops aren't getting there in three seconds. Right. So you've got to do something on your own. And right. so with regard to specifically the, the unfortunate increase in terrorism and terrorist activities that we're seeing all over the globe as well as, you know, here at home, again, awareness will keep you out of a lot of trouble. And if something does start to happen around you, get down and get behind cover. Okay. And that means that you're getting behind something that can stop a bullet. Okay? Okay. Not just something that's going to hide you from somebody, which is concealment. There's a big difference between cover and concealment. Okay. Concealment simply means you're hiding and they can't see you, but it's not going to stop at a bullet coming through. Right. So you get behind you know, a concrete column or you know, a car or something that is going to be a big, heavy object that's going to stop something if necessary. Right, exactly. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Pete. Great advice, and um, can't wait to see that new book.